My name is uh, Jiří Olša. I work for uh, Red Hat. I work on eBPF and perf related stuff. And this presentation is about various features in the eBPF land that actually happened uh, recently or are about to happen soon. Uh, some of the features are still like on the mailing list in the in the form of patches. So, so I put together uh, some list of the features that I was forced to uh, actually deal with, or I I found on the mailing list. Hopefully, that might be uh, hopeful for somebody. So let's start. Uh, calling kernel function. So eBPF actually allows you to add uh, code to the kernel. It doesn't need to be module. Module. It's just. Uh, binary, binary instructions that you can insert uh, insert to the kernel on various places. And this code uh, is, of course, limited in many ways. And the new functionality is uh, being added uh, all the time. And one of the latest one is that it actually allows to call uh, kernel functions. So that was... Uh, that was pretty nice when I actually uh, heard that, that eBPF can do it. Uh, I was thinking now we can do actually everything, but of course uh, there are limitations. So if you want to call some kernel function from eBPF code, it needs to be hard-coded in the kernel. So these are really, uh, you need to say which specific function you want to call and for which uh, specific program type. And to actually get it into kernel, it needs to go through the review, through the mailing list. So you need to have a really good justification and, and business case for that. Uh, so it would actually uh, pass the review. Once you actually get uh, the function that you want to call from eBPF to the kernel, uh, then the verifier comes. Uh, verifier is a piece of software that checks every eBPF program that's being loaded to the kernel. And in case of uh, in case of uh, calling kernel functions, there are many many checks, uh, especially for the arguments. Uh, at the moment, you cannot call, for example, uh, the functions with variadic function arguments. Uh, so, I actually uh, wanted to check uh, more. So, how hard would it be actually to call panic uh, from eBPA program? And it turned out it's uh, not that bad. This is the whole uh, whole patch that you actually need to put together and send for the review. Uh, and basically what it does is that it adds the function uh, to the list and provide that list uh, to the verifier. So the verifier knows about that. And then in the eBPF program, you can actually call uh, the panic. Uh, as I said, uh, the functions with variadic Arguments are not supported at the moment, so I had to add uh, like the wrapper uh, for the panic function because that's a shiny example of variadic function arguments. Uh, so I added the wrapper, but uh, it's it still works, of course. Uh, so if you actually put this change uh, to the kernel, uh, you should be you, know, you should be uh, able to call uh, panic uh, from the EBPA program. This is. This is actually not so as crazy as it looks like. I was actually asked by uh, one of uh, one of my colleagues if we can do that, uh, because panic uh, is usually, at least in RHEL, uh, connected uh, with the KDAMP, and KDAMP uh, will freeze uh, the whole, uh, will actually store the whole VM core and you can investigate the kernel image uh, later. So for Debugging some uh, some race conditions that can be actually helpful because you can put the uh, this program to any uh, to any K probe to any to any place in the kernel and cause the panic and investigate later whatever whatever you want. So nice feature. Timers we can do now timers in eBPF code. That's actually not excited new feature as um, like in a generic point of view, but for eBPF code, it was actually missing. So periodic BPF code invocation, that's what it does. Uh, you sp 
specify interval in nanoseconds, you choose the clock, and there, there you go. Uh, the eBPF code will be uh, will be uh, invoked uh, periodically. You can choose the clock, and uh, the callback is actually called in soft IRQ context, so that's something you need to count on. And different invocations can be on uh, different CPUs, so that's also something you need to count on uh, if you rely on uh, CPU uh, specific data. How does it look uh, from API point of view? It's not that bad. It's this set of API. Uh, you just set a callback and and make the timer start. One interested, interesting thing is that, uh, so you need to have this BPF timer uh, handler and that needs to be part of BPF map. Uh, that's uh, for the reason that the BPF timer is actually connected uh, with the map and the timer the timer lives as long uh, as the element with the timer is in the map uh, so that's the limitation the timer is bound uh, to the map uh, but you can actually pin the map to the bpf file system and such timer can then uh, run uh, forever uh, of course, if you update and delete, uh, delete the elements in the map that holds the timer, such timer will get cancelled. And of course, the callback needs to be uh, in some eBPF program. So uh, this eBPF uh, program needs to be uh, needs to be present, needs to be alive to uh, for the timer to to exist. So quite standard uh, timer API. The exciting thing is that eBPF now can actually can actually do that. Moving on to next feature, BTF kind tech. So this actually moves us to BTF land, which stands for BPF type format uh, data. So this basically describes, uh, if I focus this only to the kernel, the BTF uh, describe every every type in the system, every structure, every function uh, uh, in a very compact way. So you can actually have uh, BTF data for kernel uh, with around, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, about two, three megabytes of data, which is which is really nice compared, uh, for example, to Dwarf. Uh, the kind tech is basically adding the possibility to take uh, various pieces of uh, types in this BTF uh, data. So for example, in the structure, uh, where you have elements of the structure, you can take uh, uh, various fields of the structures, or you can take uh, various, uh, various uh, variables or, or the functions uh, themselves. Uh, so, and later on, you can actually uh, you can actually display it uh, with the BPF tool. Uh, you can actually see the text in the BTF BTF data. So, what is it good for? Uh, at the end, it's used by verifier, uh, and the whole generation of this data is that the su this support for the tagging is in the Clang uh, C uh, CLang compiler. So, it allows you to add this dash dash attribute uh, tagging. Uh, on the on the C source uh, layer, then this tagging is generated as new elements to the dwarf. From the dwarf, the uh, Pahol uh, tool will take it and generate the BTF data, and then the verifier can actually can actually use it. So we can tag uh, various uh, type information. What is it good for? There's a really nice uh, example which is now in the form of uh, patches uh, on the on the mailing list. So imagine you want to hook uh, this function, do execv function, uh, which has arguments, uh, which has pointers arguments, and those pointers are pointing to the uh, to the user space uh, address. Uh, those pointers are already tagged with uh, dash dash user, dash dash user tag. So. Um, uh, so, so on the C source uh, layer, we actually know that they are pointing uh, uh, pointing uh, to the user space, and it's used as the moment in the moment for sparse, which is doing uh, various checking. 
Uh, but for CLANG, now with this BTF tech uh, feature, we can actually add this tag uh, for this argument to the BTF data. And now, when verifier will load the program that will hook to this function, it knows that the arguments are point pointing to the user space. So the verifier now can check when you read those arguments. Are you using the BPF uh, read user helper? Because if you are not, that's probably that's probably a mistake. So this will greatly help uh, verifier to do uh, even more strict checking on the on the on the eBPF uh, programs. So nice feature. Uh, this feature is actually already on the mailing list, so this should and this should happen soon. Moving on, lib BPF tools. Lib BPF tools is new RPM, uh, uh, new RPM under BCC. Uh, it's like the uh, sub package, and it co contains compiled uh, BCC tools. So, if you are familiar with BCC tools, you know it's actually Python script uh, that holds uh, the eBPF program. And when you run the BCC tool, it needs to take the uh, eBPF program and compile it uh, through the Clang and LLVM libraries. So standard BCC tools have actually uh, big dependencies on LLVM and Clang. And if you want to install them, you will you will bring bring in all those dependencies. Uh, that's not the case for libbpf tools. They are basically compiled BCC tools, so they are C C uh, C binaries, and then they contain uh, they contain uh, the eBPF program already in compiled way. So, if you install libbpf tools, there's no uh, there's no dependencies. There are just uh, three or four standard libraries uh, that you need to uh, that you need to take in, which are already uh, probably installed. And also the loading time is much better because standard BCC tool, as I said, needs to go uh, through this LLVM and Clank and compile the code. So there can be small delay at the beginning. And that's not the case uh, for the, and uh, that's not the case uh, for the lib, uh, BPF tools. Uh, there's, uh, there's of course a bit less feature. First, it's a new package. Second, it's written in C, so it's not so easy to add all the all the features from standard BCC tools, which is uh, written in Python. Uh, but as I said, it's quite young, so new features are coming. So you should see uh, you should see new features coming to the to the tools. Uh, all the tools are installed uh, with the BP, BPF dash uh, prefix. That's not something we invented in Fedora. It was actually cross distribution effort. So with major distributions, we discussed and uh, and deal on the on on the layout of the package. So that was that was nice, nice to see. Moving on, Pahol speed up. So Pahol is now traded. Uh, what is Pahol? Pahol is tool that actually generates the uh, BTF uh, BTF data. If you ever compile Linux kernel uh, and you have the BTF enabled, uh, you can see this uh, BTF line uh, with the object. And that's basically the invocation of the Pahol utility, which takes the dwarf data and transform it uh, to the BTF data. And depends on your kernel size and on the size of your type information and dwarf size, it actually can take uh, some time, uh, especially in distribution kernel. So there was always an effort to make uh, Pahol faster. And finally, threads are added uh, to the uh, to the Pahol. Uh, there's the J option that makes that uh, possible. Uh, it was it was split to two stages. The first one is already done, and uh, it has actually very nice uh, stats. So this is the benchmark of uh, one of the uh, Pahol invocations. So uh, real night speed up from eight seconds to uh, to three, and on the mailing list there's there's already uh, there's uh, there's already uh, the second stage of the threading. So. Uh, 
uh, which uh, which actually makes this even faster. So uh, so so yeah, this this will no longer bite us uh, in the in the distribution kernel because uh, sometime it could actually take a long time to generate the BTF BTF data. And finally, new iterators. So what is iterator? Iterator is a BPF program uh, that allows you uh, to go through the uh, various uh, kernel structures. And it invokes uh, the program on every instance of the structure. So for example, if you iterate tasks, your eBPF program uh, will get executed with the pointer to every task and the iterator can take this pointer and get uh, all the data uh, from that object and send it to the user space or do do whatever it wants so it's it's a really nice feature and it grows uh, with the abilities to uh, to dump or iterate over uh, various new uh, objects in the kernel so these are uh, free latest one uh, the Unix sockets. So now we can iterate over the over the Unix sockets uh, and over the instances of I/O Uring and and the EPOL. Uh, the latter two are actually not merged yet. It's only on the mailing list, but it will probably happen very soon. There's actually a really nice way uh, to check uh, on the iterators if you go to the uh, under the kernel uh, to the self-tests uh, BPF and if you actually manage uh, manage them to compile uh, you can then take uh, every uh, each uh, iterator object that was uh, that was compiled uh, in those self-tests and use BPF tool uh, to pin that object uh, to the BPS file system so that's what I did for the Unix sockets. Uh, I, I, I took the object and put it to the BPF file system, and then you can get uh, the file, and it will actually run the iterator and get you get you the data. So this is the example how you get the dump of the of the Unix sockets uh, using the eBPF eBPF iterator. It's very easy to actually uh, go to the source code of that of that uh, BPF iter Unix object and change uh, change it to display whatever whatever you want or to get any data uh, any data you want as for the two other iterators uh, uh, you cannot use bpf tool to actually display them because both io uring and epol are instances inside the program that you would uh, that you would uh, use um, but just to illustrate what the eBPF program is getting on the input. Uh, so for EPOL, uh, when you actually register eBPF program on some eBP, uh, on some EPOL instance, the eBPF program will get on the uh, on the input the pointer, the EPI. This is pointer to EP uh, EPOL item, and you can you can actually go uh, and check any any field from the structure and uh, and print it. So you can actually disc uh, you can actually show what uh, what is inside, uh, how, how we configured the, the EPOL. It works the same for the IOU ring. Uh, there's two versions of that. Of course, uh, you need uh, you can you can display the buffers that you configure the IOU ring with, or you can uh, you will get uh, the files. So as uh, for the files, you will get directly the file uh, file pointer. So you can actually get any information uh, from that object uh, with regards to the file. So that can be that can be quite useful. And with that, that's it for my presentation. If you have any questions, uh, thank you, Irka, for the uh, for the presentation. Now is time for the questions. So please. Uh, put your questions into Q and A tab under this session, if you have any. Um, 
looks like there isn't any uh, any question. So thank you again, Irka, and thank you everyone for joining us uh, uh, during this. Ah, yeah, sorry. There is one question from uh, Christophe de Dinshin. Uh, can you list some limitations of uh, BB, BPF, Irka? Limitations. Uh, there are. That's quite a generic question. Uh, you mean limitations of the programs, or so basically? Uh, well, you load the uh, eBPA programs uh, to the kernel enforced. Okay, I'm asking about enforced restrictions. So yeah, the eBPF program is uh, is restrict uh, in many ways uh, when it's loaded uh, to the kernel. One of them is, for example, uh, the calling of the kernel functions. It cannot uh, it cannot uh, do that. There were many uh, restrictions like uh, you cannot uh, use the uh, loops, which is actually now possible uh, at some way. So. Yeah, in past there were many. It's uh, it's getting uh, better and better. Of course, all those limitations stems from the safety. So it's basically uh, whatever the verifier can can check and and guarantee that the eBPF program will be safe to run inside the uh, kernel. That limitations goes away. But yeah, there are there are still some. So I don't see any more questions. So we will see if uh, there is some, there is some more. Hmm. Otherwise, thank you everyone for for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of the Vrevkonf.